it's my aim to make you the best network engineer that you can be. In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to run scripts on Cisco devices. In other words, run them on box. You don't need Python to run these scripting options. They've been around in the Cisco iOS for many, many years. I'm gonna show you how to use Tickle or TCL scripts. I'm gonna show you how to use the Embedded Event Manager, and I'm gonna show you how to use Linux scripts directly on Cisco devices. Again, you don't need Python to run these scripts. You don't need a separate VM or a separate shell. You can run these directly on Cisco iOS. So in the same place where you type conf t or enable, you'll be able to run these scripts. I want you to be the best network engineer in your organization. I want you to go to interviews and blow away people with your knowledge and skills. When a senior network engineer looks at what you're doing, surprise them with the knowledge that you have. Now, a favor from you. If you enjoy this video, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy these videos, click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. Now, with that being said, let me show you how you can do really cool things on Cisco iOS devices. In this example, I'm using GNS3. I'm not using a special version of Cisco iOS. I'm just using traditional Cisco iOS devices here. Okay, so the first scripting option is using Tickle or TCL scripts. This document was updated in 2011. In other words, this has been around for a long time. The next one is the iOS Embedded Event Manager. This has also been around for a long time. And then I'm gonna show you the Cisco iOS shell. I've shown you this in other videos, but here I wanna show you some scripting options using the Cisco iOS shell. Okay, so let's start with Tickle or TCL. Now, you're gonna run this in enable mode on a Cisco device. In my GNS3 topology, here's router one. I've got router two, router three. These are all Cisco iOS V devices. So if I type show version here, notice VIOS, this is the version of iOS. There's nothing special about this. This is just standard Cisco iOS. Okay, so TCL SH, notice the mode that we're in. Whole bunch of commands are available here. But what we're gonna do is we're going to create a for loop. So for each, and you can call this anything, IP address, a variable, whatever you like, Notice the brackets. So for each value here, we are going to ping the variable IP address. So I'm gonna copy that onto the Cisco device. Now I don't need to be in this mode, so I'm gonna say TCL quit, to quit out of tickle or TCL, and I'm gonna paste this in. Notice what happens when I press enter now the router pings those four IP addresses in the list. Now, this is a very basic script. I mean, what I could do here is add a whole bunch of additional IP addresses, but what I'll do is I'll simply add back duplicates of some of the IP addresses. So I'll copy that, quit out of here and paste that in, and that wouldn't, very quickly, but notice they have pasted the script in, and what it's doing now is it's pinging every one of those IP addresses, as well as the additional IP addresses that I specified. So let's do TCL quit there. Now that's okay, but you don't necessarily wanna have to paste that in every time. But if you're just doing some work on a device and you wanna test IP connectivity, to multiple devices, you can do that. A lot of CCIE candidates use this for testing connectivity in their CCIE labs. Now, what I've also got here is a Windows PC. This is a Windows 10 computer, and I'm running the SolarWinds TFTP server on this computer. You can download the SolarWinds TFTP server for free using the link below. It's free software that you can download and use. And what I've got here in the TFTP root directory is a tickle script. Okay, so here's our script. I'll make the font a bit bigger so it's easier to read. 
But essentially, it's the same option as we had before. I've just got tab between all the IP addresses. So basically, the same type of script. But what I can do now is copy that to the flash of the router. So what's the IP address of this PC? It's 10.1.1.101. The name of the file is ping.tickle or ping.tcl. It's up to you which way you want to pronounce that. So back on my router, DRR shows us that that file doesn't exist in Flash. Let's make sure that we can ping the TFTP server. I can. So copy TFTP Flash. 10.1.1.101 is the TFTP server IP address. Ping.tickle or ping.tcl is the file name. I'm going to copy that to Flash. That's now copied across. Notice copied successfully. DRR shows us that that file is in Flash. What you can do now is simply use this command. So tclsh and the name of your script in Flash. So on my router, tclsh, you may want to do it this way. And notice there you go. Or just do tclsh and the name of the file in Flash. And there you go once again. So you could put a file like this in the Flash of a device. You can actually call it directly from a TFTP server. If you want to, you don't have to run it in Flash, but I did in this example. And notice that script now pings all the devices. I could use more to look at my script. So notice there's the script. Once again, all it's doing is running tclsh for each IP address in this list here. Notice the brackets once again. It's going to ping the IP addresses in that list. Okay, so that's a very basic example of Tickle or TCL. If you want to get more information, have a look at this configuration guide. I've put a link below this video if you want to have a look at this and get more information. You can do various things with this, but I think the most useful basic option, so the low-hanging fruit, as they would say, is to simply use it to ping multiple devices in your network. Very basic script. Okay, so that's TCL or Tickle. The next one is the Cisco IOS Embedded Event Manager. Let's have a look at that. Once again, there's a lot of documentation on Cisco's website. They've got links for real-time network event detection and more, writing policy using command line interface, etc. But I'm going to show you a fairly simple example to get you started. What I've got here is a script that says event manager applet, give it a name. So in this example, I'm looking for interface gigabit 00 going down. Basically, what it's doing is it's looking for this statement in syslog. So it's looking for a syslog message like that. As an example, on my router, if I go on to interface gigabit 00 and I shut that interface, notice we'll see that statement in the output right over there. Interface has gone down. Now, you could look for different events. So OSPF neighbor relationship going down or something else happening. You can use this to send you an email if something happens in your network. I'm starting with a basic example here. Let me know if you're interested in more detailed or more complex examples. But basically, what we're going to do is look for an event. And then we've got a time period and different actions, action one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we're going to do is run CLI commands. Don't forget to use enable as your first command, then conf t. Then we're going to go onto that interface, gigabit zero, zero. And then we're going to shut it down and no shut it. And then we're going to write a syslog message saying interface went down. You could put any kind of message there that you wanted to. But let's copy that. And again, I'll put this script below the video so that you can copy it and use it yourself. You use all of these at your own risk. But I've tested this, and I'll show you right now that it does work. So I'll go into global configuration mode, and I'll paste that script in. So notice in global config mode, event manager applet interface goes down. Now notice what happens. 
interface gigabit is zero, zero. I'm gonna shut it down. So interface has gone down, but notice suddenly interface has come up again. Notice the special message here, gigabit zero, zero went down. And if I type do show IP interface brief, notice interface is up, up. So show run, let's have a look at that running config. Right at the bottom here, notice here's my event manager. I could change that as an example. I could say, what's going on? Gigabit zero zero went down. So let's do that. Copy that in. So global config mode. Question mark will give you problems. So let's do that manually. And I'll show you another trick when it comes to question marks. So let's do this, paste that in, press control V, question mark. Now I can actually add a question mark. So on Cisco iOS, if you need to add a question mark somewhere, use control V to allow you to add it. So I'll paste the rest of that there. And I should be in the right mode. So event manager is my mode. Let's paste that back. It's accepted that. And all I need to do is end my script. Okay, so show IP interface brief. Interface is currently up, up, but I'll go onto the interface and shut it. So I've manually shut the interface down. Notice we see our message, what's going on? Interface went down. Notice interface goes down, but the interface comes up again. So interface has come up. Do show IP interface brief. Interface is back to being up, up. Okay, we've also got debugs. So before I wrap this up, let's have a look at debugs. So what I'll do is enable that debugging. So EEM debugging is on. Go onto the interface and shut it. And hopefully what we'll see now is the commands will run. And there you go. Okay, so going up. A lot of output here, let's make that bigger. Here I shut the interface down. Notice the interface changed state to administratively down. CLI open was called, so the script was called. Some other information is displayed because we've opened up a TTY line or a connection to the device. You see this when you telnet or SSH to a Cisco IOS V device. But notice the important part is here, out, router one. We sent the command enable, out, router one, privilege mode. We've sent the command config terminal. This is what's displayed now. We're in global config mode. We sent the command interface gigabit zero, zero. That's the mode. We've shut the interface down. We've no shut the interface. We've displayed a message and the script is now ended. And now the interface has come up again. So show IP interface brief. Notice the interface is up, up. So basic example of a event manager applet showed you that with a debug. So that was a very basic example of using the Cisco IOS embedded event manager. It's one to get you started. You can have a look at this document for more information. There's plenty of options. You could look for OSPF neighbor relationships going down and then you can get it to send you an email as an example if you wanna do that. A lot of options available here, but that's a good one to get you started. Okay, the next one is the Cisco IOS shell. This allows you to use Linux commands directly on the Cisco IOS. Here's a very basic one, 4x in 123, do something. What are we gonna do? We're gonna ping this variable, x, which would be one, two, or three, and then the script is done. So let's try that on router one. Here's router one again. For this to work, I have to enable shell processing full, so either globally on the router switch, or I can do it on a per session basis by using that command. So you don't need to do both. This will just enable it on the local telnet or SSH or console line, 
until you've finished, in other words, till you exit out, then it'll stop running. This enables the function all the time. So basically this enables Linux commands on the router switch. So for X in one, two, three, what are we gonna do? We're going to ping 10, one, one, X, done. And notice it now pings those IP addresses. So it ping 10, one, 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 ping 10, one, one, two, timed out there because of op and pinged 10.1.1.3. So we've now pinged three IP addresses. Now at the moment, show shell functions shows us that there are no user defined functions. We've only got built in functions. So built in functions are what's enabled when you type that command terminal shell as an example. So we can do things such as show run grep face. In other words, use Linux commands directly on the Cisco iOS. But what we can do is create our own user defined functions. So what I'm gonna do is paste that script in. Basically we've created a function called test ping. Now if I remove that just to show you this, I'm gonna remove that function. And now when I try and use the command test ping, it doesn't work, command doesn't work. But when I paste that in now, and I use the command test ping, notice it works, because I've created this user defined function. Notice the brackets, this is a function, and what we're doing here is running four commands, so like pinging different devices. Now you could do something like function echo, if you like. So just get it to echo something. This is not doing much except printing stuff to the screen. But the point is, is that you can create your own functions that can do things. So notice now when I type test echo, it just echoes those values back. It doesn't really do anything. Test ping is probably more valuable to us. So show shell function now shows us that we've got these user defined functions. Notice function test echo, function test ping. Okay, so I think that's enough. This video is getting really long, but that gives you an idea of what's possible using the Cisco iOS. Remember, we didn't have to run Python here. We didn't have to drop down to a Linux shell. We didn't have to use a Linux VM. We ran these commands directly on the Cisco iOS. Go out there and show people how much you know. Go and surprise them and amaze them with your knowledge of the Cisco iOS. I'm gonna continue in the series teaching you options that not everyone knows so that you can be a so-called boss on the Cisco iOS or like a really cool network engineer. Now, please, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the bell to get notifications so that you know when I upload a new video. I'm David Bumble, wanna wish you all the very best. Thank <laughs> you.